Alrighty, so here we go. Let's do the preview of week number four. And before I actually get into the preview, I just want to quickly say that since tomorrow, I am getting my second dose of the vaccine. And that since the second dose of the vaccine, as you know, has a bigger side effects and that, you know, I hear people have like a headache, fever, or even just doesn't feel very well after they, they of course, have that second dose of the vaccine. This does put me in a difficult situation where since there's going to be a lot of games that's going to be happening on Saturday and especially a lot more matinee games that's going to be happening on Saturday than you usually see on a busy Saturday day weekend's action around MLS. I fear that I might not actually be able to catch most of those action because you know i already said before it is very tough for me to try to keep track of all these games and all it's always tough for me to try to keep up four games at a time but to do that and also you're feeling sick and you feel like you're having a a fever then yeah that's just that's just not possible so it it's most likely for this week i might actually not catch as much mls action as possible and i just want to of course take care care of my body because as much as i i love doing this and this is my hobby you know if i don't feel well when i when i want to do a hobby i probably shouldn't have done that and it's also kind of a shame the fact that i probably won't catch as much mls action as possible because this week is also kind of a mini heineken rivalry week with some of the big rivalry that is going to be happening in this week which we'll of course get to but first of all let us actually get into uh this week's action and we're actually going to talk about the first 10 games of this week's action because we're going to talk about the Friday game which is going to be between RSL versus the Quakes and then the nine games that's going to be happening on Saturday and we'll talk about the free games that is going to be happening on Sunday uh, tomorrow and most likely right after when I take that that second dose of the vaccine because I think you don't actually get an immediate side effect right after you take take your second dose of the vaccine I think it takes about 24 hours for, for that side effects to really kicked in. And also, uh, bef before, I, I know I've been kind of delaying in terms of talk about this first game, but I also want to award this week's winner in terms of the MLS bye week sweepstake. And this week winner is FC Cincinnati. So congratulations, FC Cincinnati. I mean, besides wi winning the wooden spoon year after year, you got your latest, latest um, award to add to your trophy cases which is winning this week's sweepstake of the only MLS team that has a bye week. But it, all series aside, I mean, they desperately needed this bye week. I mean, with how things have gone for, for them in the first couple of weeks, they definitely need need a, a week or two to try to regroup themselves and hope to to head into next week and maybe get the, themselves back, back into a more respectable kind, kind of way that they're expecting. For this season but we start off uh with rsl versus the san jose earthquakes which will kick off at 9 30 or actually it will start at 9 30 p.m eastern 6 30 p.m pacific still trying to get used to to of course talk about the, the start of the game when the actual kickoff of this game is not until 7 38 p.m uh rsl of course the only team in mls to still have a perfect record after three weeks as they have a record of 2 0 and 0 while the quakes they have a record of 2-0-1 after they won back-to-back -back games and outscored their opponents 7 goals to 2 in their back-to-back -back games. For RSL, in terms of the first free week resort, uh, they won against Minnesota on the road on opening weekend by a score of 2 goals to 1. Then last week, they of course won 3-1 against Sporting KC. While for the Quakes, despite the fact that they lost 2-1 on the road against Houston, they of course won 3-1 against Dallas and then won 4-1 against DC United at home. But, as I said before, you know, as much as I'm happy of how the Quakes have got off to a good start, which is something that we haven't had under under Almeida, knowing the fact that we, the first two seasons under the Almeida era will always start off to be very slow. My concern with this team is the fact that how, how are they going to do now when they do play against good team because you know yes it's great that they outscored their opponents seven to two at home but those two opponents were fc dallas and dc united i mean those are pretty easy teams to to beat and teams that i expect the quakes of course get all three points but if i think that this team maybe could make that next step and be kind of that that playoff contender they of course will have to go to to face these very good team and maybe grind out and reserve and i think this is this is a, a beginning of a, a good test for them to see how they're going to do in their next couple of games because their next couple of games they got some really tough teams including after this one they of course go back back home for a Wednesday clash against the Seattle Sounders and then just three days later they of course 
will be playing against the, the Portland Timbers. And in other words, this is also the first game of what would be three games in seven days for the Quakes as the schedule is started to be, be a little bit con condensed for a lot of the, these teams. But nevertheless, this is also still going to be a tough test. And I don't also think that not many people would have thought that this game heading into week number four would be one of the games that, that will be featured sure two teams near the top part of the table like a lot of people thought that one of these teams or maybe even both of these teams probably will start the season slow and this might be just kind of a meaningless friday game oh no it this it's this is a game between two teams that i think i think it, it's safe to say that not a lot of people expected both of these teams to get off to a great start and it'll be very interesting to see who can potentially continue in this game between rsl versus the san jose earthquakes but now moving on in terms of the next match is the the first of what would be six games that's going to be happening in, as part of the matinee action obviously we uh, as i said we have more matinee action i think than we have ever had this season and it's also been a while that i remember where there's actually like six games that is going to be happening in the in the matinee time period because usually we only get like one or two before we got like a ton more games in the nightcap action and you can also say that this saturday action for this week is kind of like the opposite of what we usually see where usually we get like the the meat of the saturday action during the nightcap but this week it's kind of like the matinee part of, of the saturday night or the saturday action that of course are, are the meat of the saturday action in mls and also the nightcap is pretty much where things are kind of calm down a little bit now uh in this game between the chicago fire versus the union this will start at 1 p.m eastern 10 a.m pacific this is one of the two games that will start in that slot and it will will kick off at a lunchtime kickoff time in chicago at 12:08 p.m uh chicago of course 0-1 and 2 after they 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 lost two nothing against the the red bulls while well, the union they lost two nothing to nycfc at home which means that their record is now 0-1 and 2 the first free week resort for the fire you know after they got that promising 2-2 draw against new england things have not been been going well for them uh they lost 3-1 to atlanta on the road and then they lost two nothing against the the red bulls on the road for the union they of course drew nil nil on their opening weekend game against the columbus crew but ever since that it's also have not gone gone well for the the union they lost 2-1 at home against inter miami and lost 2 nothing against nycfc and for a team that did not lose a single regular season home game last season they've already start the their their home record this season with an 0-2 record now that being said you know this is also a team that has been in in ccl play and you know now we know that they're still going to be the only mls team that is still in ccl play although they don't have to worry about that until august because ccl this season since it's pretty much spread out throughout the entire season it's going to take a while before we get in to the the semi-final match when they play against Copa america in august but for now i think this is a way for them to try to of course of course make up make up uh the their their make up their their poor start that they had this season and also they are not going to have jose martinez in this game which i'm kind of surprised that i haven't heard anything about about um or anything from disco about jose martinez and whether or not if he's going to be suspended for an additional game probably i'm assuming that's going to be the case and probably disco is going to announce it at the very last minute because they tends to always do that and you know for those of you wondering why i think jose martinez of course should deserve a additional game of suspension well you should just look at what happened in in that incident that got him a, a red red card in that game against nycfc and that pretty much will explain why he probably is going to get more than just the one game suspension that he's going to, to have in this game and you know for the chicago fire obviously this is a big chance for them to maybe get a win we know they have a good record at home and let's see if they can of course do that against a union side that you know you know, even though they were the only team that, of course, were moving on to the semifinal of CCL, you know, I think all these teams that were part of CCL action in the middle of the week is going to be a little bit fatigued heading into these weekend's action. But now moving on, in terms of the next match, is an, is the Red Bulls versus Toronto FC. So this game also start at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Actual kickoff will be 1.08 p.m local time the red bulls of course finally got their their first win of the season and also gerard strooper finally got his first win as a head coach of the new york red bulls after they won 
2 0 against the Chicago Fire at home to improve their record to 1 0 and 2. While Toronto, they were the only team that did not play last week as they, of course, won the, 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 the weekly bye week sweep sweepstake and their record remains at 0 1 and 1. The first free week resort for the Red Bulls, uh, they lost 2 1 on the, or they lost 2 1 at home against Sporting KC before they lost 3 2 on the road against against the Galaxy, but they did win 2 nothing at home against the Chicago Fire uh, in their last week action. Well, for, for TFC, they, of course, lost 4-2 against Montreal on, on the road in the Canadian Classic, and then just two weeks ago, they drew 2-2 against the Vancouver Whitecaps at home. So, yeah, you know, you know, talking about CCL teams that need to, to, to maybe be, be, be coming back to MLS play and maybe get, get, get back to in their rhythm after a, a poor start certainly tfc would hope that that of course is the case and you know you know we this is still a team that you know there's still a lot of question in in terms of the injuries of this team and you know at least the good thing is they kind of got some of their their mo more important player back into this team uh one of those is io at Noah, who i think he is now now back healthy because he did play the full 90 minutes against Cruz Azul, but there's still a question whether or not if Pozuelo, who has not played a single minute, and we still don't know what's going on with, with Pozuelo right now, we'll see whether or, or not we might get some update, or whether he, he might be even surprisingly be included in in the the 18, the, the, the 18 of, during the, the game the action, and you know, for the Red Bulls, let's see if they can build up after that impressive win that they have against the Chicago Fire and get themselves self going now that they finally got that monkey off the back last week of getting their first win of the season. But now moving on, in terms of the next match, is going to be the Columbus Crew versus DC United. So the Columbus Crew, like many CCL t team, or like many MLS team that was in CCL this season, they're also off to a slow start with an 0-2-0 record. Well, DC United has a 1-0-2 record as this game starts at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. The actual kickoff will be 1.38 p.m. local time. Columbus, of course, drew 0-0 against the, the against CF Montreal. Almost had Montreal in, impact there, but, you know, got to remember, they're called CF Montreal on now, even though I know a, there's still a lot of people that is kind of complaining about that name uh well for dc united they lost back-to-back -back game games after got off to a great start to the season and been outscored five to one during that stretch last uh, or the first free week of the resort for columbus they're actually the on only team in the league to not only have uh, yet to score a goal this season but they also have not conceded a goal this season after they drew 0-0 against the Union and also drew 0-0 last week against Montreal. Well, for DC United, they won 2-1 against NYCFC, but that was pretty much the, the happiest time for DC fans during this season because after that, they lost 1-0 on the road against New England and they lose 4-1 against the, the Quakes on the road. And, you know, talk about injuries. DC is another team that is just riddled with with injuries right now although you know they do have a chance against a columbus team that you know i don't know if they're going to be playing this game game in a, in a very angry mode after what happened been last week or they might be feeling a little bit exhausted after losing free nothing against riotos i'm guessing maybe it's kind of the latter because you know on one hand 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 it's kind of disappointing that they they got eliminated by riotos in that second leg but on the other hand they now can focus on league play and you know that they do not want to want to remember what happened in, on Wednesday action and they're looking to try to bounce back in this game against a DC team that again this team is just riddled with with injuries right now and it's kind of hard, hard for me to to imagine if they can potentially go on the road in this game against a Columbus team that again as I said I think they're going to be coming out out angry in this game despite the fact that they they probably are mentally exhausted after what happened in that that Wednesday game against Riotos and most likely get their first win of the season in this one but now moving on in terms of the next match uh speaking of team that's still searching for their first win uh Nashville is also doing that now for Nashville you know I can understand why there is some concern in terms of the fan base of the fact that they start this season with an 0-3 and 0 all record uh even though you know technically they haven't haven't lost a game this season they also haven't won 
a game this season. And knowing the fact that Nashville, when you look at their schedule, it's very home-heavy to start the season. In fact, they're the only MLS team to start the season with four straight home games. You know that, that there's pressure for them to, of course, get, get at least something thing or get all three points at home and that they don't want to avoid dropping points for the fourth game in a row but it's not going to be easy because they are going to be playing against new england revolution who's currently at the top of the eastern conference in this early season uh they won 2-1 at home against atlanta to to get themselves at the top of the eastern conference with a 2-0-1 record and for nashville uh they drew 0-0 to inter miami at home which pretty much is now their third straight draw heading into this new season this game will kick off at or will start at 1 30 p.m eastern 10 30 a.m pacific but the actual kickoff time will not start until 12 38 p.m local time and the first free free week resort for nashville they had a pair of 2-2 draw to start the season drawing 2-2 against fc cincinnati and drawing 2-2 against montreal before drawing 0-0 as i mentioned to inter miami well for new england they drew 2-2 against new england won one nothing against dc united and 1-2-1 against the Chicago Fire. And again, like I said, for Nashville, it is very important that they 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 maybe need to, of course, get a win in this game because you you know you know I don't want to say that this is kind of kind of a symptoms of them having a, a sophomore kind of slump, but this just have not been a good start for for this Nashville team. And a big reason why they haven't really got off to a, to a good start is because they always tend to start the game the the game slow and get them in in a bit of bit of a hole to start the games uh, like even the last game when they drew nil nil against inter miami they could have easily find themselves two nothing down if it wasn't for the goalkeeper joe willis making some some good save and you know against new england a team that has a very stingy defense uh nashville just cannot afford to get themselves down early in this game because i have a feeling if they do find themselves down early in this game again new england is not going to let them let them back in in this one but now moving on into the next match is going to be Vancouver versus CF Montreal. Again, almost at Montreal impact again, still getting used to calling them them CF Montreal or in general Montreal. Montreal. Uh, but this game is going to kick off at 3 or start at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. And the actual kickoff time will not start until 3.08 p.m. local time. Or actually, no, not 3.08 p.m. local time. It's actually 1.08 p.m. local time. I forgot that that Vancouver is actually the home team in in this game. And they're actually playing at Rio Tinto Stadium. Like, so far, in terms of, so of a lot of these Canadian teams, I always know that with these Canadian teams, Montreal and Toronto always tends to play at home in an early kickoff. And Vancouver is kind of the only one that still still play in, in terms of night games for for, a, for their first couple of games that that they're playing at home at Rio Tinto Stadium and this is just one of those ones where they're actually going to be joining these Canadian team where where they're basically going to be part of the early matinee nay kickoff but yeah uh for the Vancouver Whitecaps uh they lost one nothing at home in their last match which now their record is even at one win one draw and one losses while for Montreal they drew nil nil to the Columbus crew at home and their record is now at 1-2-0. The first free week resort for, for both of these teams, for the Whitecaps, they got off to a great start to the season by winning one nothing against the Portland Timbers. And then, then they drew 2-2 against Toronto and then lost one nothing against Colorado in their last match. While for Montreal, they also got off to a great start to the season, winning 4-2 against Toronto in the Canadian Classique, then drawing 2-2 against Nashville before drawing 0-0 against against the columbus crew so yeah let's see how both of these teams is going to go and certainly both of these teams i would say you could say that they're kind of been been a bit of a surprising package although if you're a white caps fan you're definitely going to be very disappointed after what happened in the last game where they were facing against a relatively weak colorado side and they weren't able to get a win in that so yeah let's see how this all canadian affair will 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 do between both of these teams but that being said, now I am going to switch boards and look at the last four games, including the two two big rivalry game or two of the biggest rivalry game that is going to be happening this weekend. So technically, it's actually two of the three biggest rivalry that's going to be happening on Saturday because, you know, tomorrow we do have the Cascadia Derby, which seems like it's kind of now becoming kind of the forgotten Derby because it feels like the media from what I, I've been hearing around MLS has always been talking about this game 
between LA Galaxy versus LAFC, which of course we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, let's talk about the Texas Derby between the Houston Dynamo versus FC Dallas. And I guess it's not really called the Texas Derby anymore because, you know, you have Austin FC coming into the league this season. And, you know, they, they of course, kind of come up with a, a new new cup called the Copa Tijas. And I guess maybe this is the first ever meeting in the, the Copa Tijas. And I think that's kind of the right name for this new new derby but uh this game will start at 3 30 p.m eastern 12 30 p.m pacific actual kickoff will be at 2 50 p.m which means that when that that is kind of the kickoff time you know this game of course is going to be on twitter and indeed of course is the case although we kind of knew that this game was on twitter because i think when you look at the the past couple of texas derby or now it's called the copa tijas it's always you always going to be on on univision and on twitter but uh, the Dynamo, they drew 1-1 to LAFC at home in the last game. While for, for Dallas, they, of course, got that much-needed 4-1 win against the Portland Timbers at home. In the last five head-to-head -head derby in this Texas derby, uh, a.k.a. the Copa Tijas, it was Dallas with a 3-0 win against the Houston Dynamo. Then it was the Dynamo with a 2-0 win against Dallas. Dallas did win 2-1 against the Dynamo before it was a 0-0 draw between both of these teams. And then Dallas, of course, won 5 1 against the Houston Dynamo. So Dallas definitely have a good record in terms of last five head to head meeting in this Texas Derby. But the thing is, this is all at, at home. And when they, of course, play on the road against the Dynamo, that's when they, of course, chorus tends to struggle. In fact, you know, Dallas, not only the fact that I've talked about how they have a very bad, bad, bad record when they go on the road for the past couple of seasons it also tends to do that when they when they do play against the the dynamo at bbva compass stadium because i don't recall uh the last time that i remember remember dallas was able to go to bbva compass stadium and win against the houston dynamo in this texas derby so yeah something tells me maybe houston of course can can get get a win and also by the way i forgot to put the record of both of these teams uh the dynamo currently have a record of one one and one well for fc dallas they have a record current of uh oh or no one one two and and oh i think or one oh oh and two no they also have a record of one 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 because I, I just remember uh besides winning the against the timbers last week they also of course uh got, got a draw against against colorado and then oh god what was the the other match that they of course play oh god I, I i can't or the match that they of course of course got a loss oh, i can't really kind of cut, think of it on top of my head right now but either way you know it's going to be very interesting to see how this latest texas derby but now, also now is called copa tijas is going to, to look like between both of these teams but now moving on in terms of the next match is going to be Orlando City versus NYCFC. So this is not really kind of a, a ri rivalry, but in some way, I think you could kind of call this this a rivalry because it seems like every time when Orlando play against NYCFC and knowing the fact that these two teams were always forever known as the two teams that come into the league to get, get her back in 2015, you could say that this is kind of like, like, like a rivalry between both of the, these one and also the first ever match between both of these team was actually facing against each other all the way back to 2015 but orlando city they currently have a 1-2-0 and record while nycfc have a 2-0-1 oh, record this game will start at 6 p.m eastern 3 p.m pacific and i did check on the mls website and they apparently they said that this game is going to kick off at six o'clock now if this game is actually going to kick off at six o'clock on ESPN, I think this might be the first time we actually have seen a, a national televised network that is actually starting right on the schedule where where they they basically said the start of the broadcast time is going to be because you know I, I don't f think we have ever had had a a situation that that of course is the case. I mean the closest I think this season we came was between LAFC versus Austin where they said it was going to kick off at 6 or it will start at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific and they kicked off one minute later than the advertised time. But if this game is actually going to start at 6 o'clock p.m. then I would definitely like to 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 say bravo to MLS for for, for kind of finally sticking off what they said that, that is the start time of this 
of the the broadcast of the game and they actually stick stick to it and that also is the kickoff of the start of this game now for orlando city they of course won three nothing against fc cincinnati at home while for nycfc they won two nothing against the the union away the first free game of the season for both of these teams it was a new new draw to start the season for orlando then it was a 1-1 draw between them and sporting kc on the road and then orlando city of course won their first game of the season last week against fc cincinnati where they were able to win three goals to nothing for nycfc C, or for nycfc after they got off to a slow start where they lost 2-1 against dc united they got back-to-back -back wins winning five nothing against fc cincinnati and then winning two nothing against the union in fact they have outscored their opponents 7-0 in the last two matches so yeah i think both of these teams are definitely going to come into this game with uh, a lot of confidence knowing the fact that you know both of them them got a big win win last week and that both of the these teams seems to, to got off to to a decent start to the season and yeah we shall see how this game of course will 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 finish in the resort of this game but now moving on into the match that according to mlssoccer.com and and fox sports in in specifically is the game of the week between LA Galaxy versus LAFC, aka El Trafico. Uh, this game, of course, is going to start right at where 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 the biggest game game that usually start on a prime time slot would actually begin, which is 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. The actual kickoff time will be 5 or 5 p.m. local time. The Galaxy coming into this game with a 2-0-1 record, while for LAFC, it's a 1-2-0 record to come into this 11 meeting of El Trafico between both of these teams. And the Galaxy currently have a slight edge in this rivalry with a record of 4-3 and, and free over their, their bitter rival LAFC. In the last five head to head El Trafico meeting, it was LAFC with a 2-0 win against the Galaxy. But the Galaxy did win 3-0 at home against LAFC. Then they won 2-0 on the road against LAFC before LAFC destroyed the Galaxy 6-2. And this was back in the MLS's back tournament. And also in the, the, the playoffs back in 2019, it was LAFC winning 5-3 against the Galaxy. And I believe that was the second round of the, the Western Conference playoff that both of these teams team meet each other. But obviously the big narrative of, the, of this game, besides the fact that this is El Trafico, is the fact that are we going to see Chicharito versus Carlos Vela? Now, there is definitely no guarantee that that, of course, is the case because, you know, Carlos Vela, he hasn't been, been playing for this LAFC team in the past two games, and you don't know whether or not not if he's going to be healthy enough to be in the 18 or even in the star 11 in this game. I'm assuming most likely he probably is not going to be in the star 11 in this game, but most likely... He could be coming off the bench for LAFC. And then also for, for the Galaxy and for Chicharito, he's been kind of bothering with, with that hamstring for the past couple of games where, you know, he, he still did play, play I think, the full 90 minutes in that that's game against the Sounders. But you can see there was multiple times where he was holding his hamstring and holding it, hold, hold, yeah, holding his hamstring. And it, it, you, you just wonder, is, is, is there there's something that, he is try trying to nurse as he, of course, is playing. And, you know, the fact that, despite the fact that he is nursing that injury and still look look to be be very de decent is kind of just a testament that I think Chicharito has definitely fought, found an edge heading into this season and, and has really looked like almost his old self and what the Galaxy were hoping he, he would be when they pay him a big sum of money. But that being said, again, you know, I'm pretty sure it... Sure, sure. Fox is really trying to to finger cross and also pretty much almost on a level to just bribe both LAFC and the Galaxy to hope that they have Chicharito and Vela in in the starting eleven in this game so that that there there could be that matchup because again you know besides the fact that they've been talking about this game for throughout the this past week and especially talked about it doing that that Galaxy versus the Seattle Sounder match. They also are hoping that this, the the narrative that they build up between Chicharito versus Carlos Vela is not going to be something that's not going to happen because it, one of these guys could potentially not not be playing in this game or even in the starting eleven or in the eighteen of this game. But we shall see whether or not if both of those guys is going to be be held healthy to be playing in this game and also for the galaxy you know in general for them this is another big test for them 
coming into this game where, you know, last week when they played against the Sounders, where I thought that was really the first big test that they, they had to show that whether or not if the Galaxy is truly lead back to being an elite team, and the answer is no, they're not. They're not anywhere clo close to that, and now they have, have the chance to maybe prove people wrong by, by playing against an LAFC side that, you know, even if Vela does play in this game, I don't think it's going to be 100% healthy. And it's going to be interesting to see how a less than 100% healthy Vela is going to do 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 in this game. Although, I, I have a feeling he's probably going to do very well. Because, you know, this is a big, big game. And any time when a player is not 100% healthy and you're playing in a big rivalry game like that it it just you just kind of pretend that you are indeed a hundred percent healthy and you get that extra motivation to to perform well even though you're you're of course not not a hundred percent healthy coming into this game but now moving on into the last game on this board is the colorado rapids versus minnesota united so you know how i said before that minnesota was supposed to play fc dallas this week uh that's actually wrong uh they they weren't supposed to play FC Dal Dallas on the road. In fact, they're not going to be playing FC Dallas on the road until June. Although next week, I believe that's when they play FC Dallas, but they're going to be playing at Allianz Field for their next week matchup. For this, But for this week, for them, they're going to be playing against the Colorado Rapids, and certainly for Minnesota, this is no doubt a big game, game for them. And I'm not going to say that this is a must-win game for them because, again, I think we are just still very early into the season to really just say that this is this is an absolute must win win for this team despite the fact that they're the only team in the league to have, have zero points and start the season 0-3. But that being said, you can also make a case, and I can maybe understand some fans said that this is a must win game for them because you definitely do not want to continue this losing streak and start the season now 0-4. And, and you know, as much as I said before how I'm not really panicking just yet despite the fact that this team has started the worst start in their franchise history i'm definitely me on that level of the fact that i have a lot of concern of how how poor the, this team have started this season but now that concern could really go into panic mode if this losing streak is going to continue because after all it doesn't matter how good your your you have your team has and how much talent your team of course has when you you are in that 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 move in that that stretch where you have a, a a losing streak going it can really damage the psychological kind of kind of thoughts of 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 a team that is on a losing streak and it's no wonder why a lot of the, these players not only are underachieving this season but there has to be a huge psychological kind of mindset where where they just they they're just just feels absolutely frustrated every single game because of the fact that this losing streak is really started to wait wait on them now the good news is coming into this game they do play against the, the Colorado Rapids and you know despite the fact that the Rapids did win one nothing against the Vancouver Whitecaps in their last game I still didn't think that they looked that that in impressive in that win and they're still trying to get get things going under under Robin Frazier in it in his second full year and by the way this game will kick off at 10 p.m. Eastern 7 p.m. Pacific and the actual start time will be 8.08 p.m. local time now the first three games for both of these team for Colorado of course they drew nil nil against Dallas before embarrassingly losing at home against Austin FC 3-1 but they didn't make up for it by winning one nothing against the Whitecaps on the road and for Minnesota yeah I don't really need to mention in terms of their first free game it's all losses against the Seattle Sounders RSL and also Austin FC last week and again they got to snap out out of this I mean as much as I know this team you know this team is too good to miss the, the playoffs like there's just no way I can really see this team even going going into this season with an 0-3 start has any chance of, of missing the playoffs but you know if this streak does continue then maybe that might not actually be be just an unthinkable kind of thing in the beginning of the season and you know just overall they need to, to snap out out of this they need to need a huge huge win in this game and they can get that huge win in this game maybe that can not only get their monk that get that first win of the season monkey off their back but also just really now 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 realize that this is a, is a team that that could could be on a level of some of these mls cup contender team like the seattle sounders laefc or even in in the eastern conference like new, new england and um and the columbus this crew that they can really compete for mls cup because as i said 
when you look at how this team has played in the first three games this season, this team look closer to FC Cincinnati than actually some of these MLS Cup contender like the Seattle Sounders and the Columbus Crew. But yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much it for the review of the first first part of me looking at these Friday and Saturday game. And as I said, tomorrow I will be looking at the last three games of week number four, which is all the Sunday game. And that, of course, include, in my opinion, the game of the week between the Seattle Sounders versus the Portland Timbers. But either way, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.